In this video I'm going to show you how to take a starting price and quantity, perhaps an equilibrium price and quantity, and how to use that information along with a price elasticity of demand and a price elasticity of supply to come up with a plausible representation of a demand and supply function that are linear. Now in reality demand and supply curves aren't really linear but a lot of times you, it's convenient to use a linear representation that will be accurate in a small range of prices and quantities. So how do you do that if all you know is what the price and quantity are today and what the price elasticity of supply, supply and demand are? Here's how to do it. Let's start by, by just writing down what we know about this situation. What we want is a function that looks like Q equals A minus BP, demand line, or an inverse demand function that's easier to graph, which is would be just solving this for P, A over B minus 1 over BQ. We also know that to calculate eta, the price elasticity of demand, sorry, epsilon, um, or which is price elasticity of demand, or eta, price elasticity of supply, is basically this function here. It's the change in quantity over the change in price times P over Q. Now, in this function, Q equals A minus BP, the B is, or, you know, it's negative, but the, the slope is going to be the thing that represents that change in quantity over change in price. And how you can see that is, think about this as a derivative, dq dp. The derivative of this demand function is minus b. Okay? So I'm just going to write it as b, but we know for a demand function it's going to be negative. Uh, the same goes, the same applies for a supply function, except that's going to be positive. So it would be q plus bp. But that slope is going to represent delta q delta p. Uh, one, over, one over that b in the demand function, uh, which is the number we see in the inverse demand here, is going to be the flip side of that, delta p, delta q. The rate of change here at which price changes as q changes. But what we need for the elasticity formula is delta q, delta p. As price changes, how fast does quantity change? What's that rate? So, here's an example. Let's suppose that our starting price is $50, our equilibrium price, and our equilibrium quantity is 25 units. And suppose for this product that we're thinking of, we know the price elasticity of demand is minus 0.5, and the price elasticity of supply is positive 0.4. So, let's just look at this down here on, on an axis. This is the only point we know. But because we know those supply and demand elasticities, we know kind of at what rate the demand and the supply curve depart from that point, uh, how fast they're going to be going up or down. So here's a little method to let you do this. First, solve for the slope of the demand or the supply function. So here's how we're going to do this. Since we know that the price elasticity of demand to start with is equal to delta Q delta P times P over Q. And um, we know delta Q delta P is the B, right? Then we can write this kind of function. We know that the slope of this demand function that we don't know yet, if we multiply it times P over Q, has to give us the price elasticity of demand minus 0.5. So let's just fill in what we know and figure out what that slope has got to be. So we know that B times 50 over 25, which is just 2, it has to equal minus 0.5. So what that tells us is that the slope, if we solve for it there, has got to be... Let's, Remember, that's just 2. Divide both sides of this equation. It's 2 times b equals minus 0.5. Divide both sides by 2, and you get that the slope here is minus 0 
for the demand equation. Okay? The second step after you figure out the slope is to figure out the y-intercept. So, in the second step, we realize that uh, the quantity equals 25. So I'm just substituting in 25 for the quantity here. And that equals the y-intercept minus b. Well, we solved for that. We know that b now is minus 0 0.25 times 50. So solve that for a. And what are you going to get? Well, when I solve that for a, we get 25 equals a minus 12 and a half. So the y-intercept equals 37.5. Now we just put it all together. What's the, equ what's the equation of a plausible linear demand function? Q equals 37.5 minus 0.25 P. If we solve that for the inverse demand function, because that's easier to graph, what we're going to get is 150 Let me just double check that. Yeah, we're going to get P equals, let me put some space here, P equals 150 minus 4Q. So now we can graph that on our axis down here, or our Cartesian coordinate plane down here. So 150 minus 4q is going to give us a line like this, and it goes right through that starting point, which it has to. Now, let's do the same thing for supply, and then we can get a feel for, for what both of these lines look like. Now, if you want to, pause the video here and try to figure out the supply equation yourself, and then come back and see if you get the same thing that I do. I'll run through it very quickly here. Okay, if you do the same thing for... Uh, supply, you're going to be getting, uh, we just have to replace the eta, sorry, the epsilon here with eta. I'll just put in because it's easier to type. Um, delta Q delta P times P over Q is going to equal the slope times P over Q, but our supply elasticity is point positive point 0.4. So we have the same price and quantity, so that's still 50 over 25 equals 2. And we know that has to equal 4. So if we solve that equation for B, what we're going to get is, pause the video, see if you get it, and I get negative, uh, positive 0.2, positive 0.2. Now in the next step, we have the same setup here. 25 is the equilibrium quantity, and we know that's equal to the inter y-intercept of the supply function plus 0.2 times 50. So if we go through and we solve that for the y-intercept, we're going to get a equals 15. And so our final supply function here is going to be Q equals 15 plus 0.2 times P. I should have had a P in, in the previous one. Um, or if we solve that for P, we're going to get something like uh, P equals minus 75 plus 5Q would be our supply equation. And that supply equation, it has, it has a very low negative y-intercept, so uh, that's going to make it a little hard to graph. However, since we know that the supply equation has to go through our starting point, and it has a slope of 5, we can use that to graph this fairly easily. Because if we start at this point, and we go down 50 to 0, we're going to go backwards by 10. Okay, so our supply function we can visualize is going to look something like this. So hopefully that will that will help you see a, a simple set of steps that you can use 
to take an initial starting price and quantity, a price elasticity of demand and supply, and come up with a plausible linear demand and supply function to represent them. As always, if you have questions, leave them in the comment or question section below. This is Berkey Canopy, signing out.